education overall. Super curricula is key. So the next three years and the next year, you, I want you to breathe, eat, sleep, super curricula, okay? Besides your academic subjects as well, besides your academic work. Right, so academic performance. Academic performance, having a good track record, applying to universities with high predicted grades. So when you apply to university, when you're in year 13, you'll be applying to university with two sets of results. Well, three, two or three two sets of results, one achieved GCSE results, for those of you who've done GCSEs, okay, number one. Number two, predicted A-level grades or predicted IB. And number three, AS results if taken. So when you apply to university, there'll be three academic results on your application form. One, GCSE, if, G if you take GCSEs. If you haven't taken GCSEs, then it's whatever equivalent to GCSEs. Number two, predicted A-level or predicted IB grades, and number three, AS results if taken, okay? So at the time when you apply, you will have these three results. So because um, it's predicted grades, predicted grades, you know, it's not accurate. Um, therefore, your achieved GCSE result is very important, okay? Number one, and of course, prediction is also important, but they'll look at against, like if you are predicted four A stars and your GCSE was C and D grades, that doesn't match, okay? So therefore, it has to be that everything matches. That's how the admission tutors will look at it. So that's the first thing, academic performance. Right, academic performance is something that you're working on anyway, right? You're working in school, you're doing your qualifications, you're doing your curriculum. But the second thing you gotta work on is super curricular performance. Building a portfolio of unique and reflective experiences, demonstrating passion, and amplifying skills. So you are building a portfolio of unique. Unique means what? Unique means everybody here will have different experiences. That is how it makes you unique. I'm not asking you to find the most unique experience. No, like you don't have to find, oh, maybe I need to go and find uh, 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 to do a uh, plastic surgery for medicine. Maybe I need to find a work experience of plastic surgery. No, it's not about um, finding something so difficult to get. It's about doing something that is unique to you because you are interested in that, right? You are interested in that kind of field, okay? Um, and then reflective. Reflective experiences means you write your blog. You reflect upon the experiences. You describe what you do. You analyze what you have learned and then you link it to your course. So writing the blog is very important. Amplifying skills. Well, how, what does it mean by amplifying skills? You basically determine what skills do you need for your course. It's like applying for a job. Before you go for that job, you need to know what skills they require to do that job, right? So you learn what, the, what skills are required for that job, for the course, and then you have to demonstrate, do you have those skills? You know, so for example, for medicine, communication is key. Do you have communication skills? Provide evidence for that. Engineering, teamwork is important. Do you have teamwork skills? Provide evidence for that, right? So that's what it means by amplifying skills, demonstrating passion. Strong grades are only 50% of a successful applicant's portfolio. Academic is only one aspect of your application, but you have to, in order to get through academic, uh, in order to get through to top universities, you have to get your foot in the door, okay? You have to get your foot in the door. And the way to get your foot in the door is academic results. If you are getting Cs and Ds and Bs, top universities are out of the equation. They're looking for As and A stars, okay? This is how it's because of competition. That's the reality of life. It's to do with competition. Okay, so you, if you're aiming for top universities, you have to score the best of that 50% uh, of your academic. Strong grades are often a byproduct of passion. Now remember, if you discover your passion, if you discover your passion, trust me, your academic results, it'll be easy for you to achieve. You know why? Because you have a dream, you have a passion, you have an ambition, you have a goal. And part of your goal is to do well in your academics. So I am never tell my students to aim for four A stars. I never tell them that. I tell them to aim for their passion, whatever that passion may be. And during that period, whilst you're aiming for your passion, 
you be working hard so that you make sure you get your passion, you get your, your whatever your ambition is, right? So your academic result is the byproduct of your passion. So don't focus on the grades, focus on your passion. Because by focusing on your passion, and then if you say, I want to do medicine, then you know to get into medical school, you need A star AA. So you will work hard for your A star AA. That becomes a byproduct, right? Right, so discover your passion. Now, those of you GCSEs, you have three years before you apply. So you're still in the ro role of sort of sorting out your academics as well as discovering your passion, right? So you've got time to explore both and make sure that both are very, very good at the same level. Now, for you guys, you, your academics, you've already done your GCSEs, so you at least know which subjects you want to do at A-level, right, or IB. So now you just have to make sure that you discover your passion if you haven't already discovered it. If you've already discovered your passion, make sure you affirm your passion. Make sure you can show evidence for your passion, okay? So that's where the super curricula comes into. Right, so what is the difference? What is the difference between academic and super curricula? Well, academic are classroom lessons. They are regular testing, exam practice, personalized revision timetable, possible additional tuition. You can have additional tuition for subjects that you're not good at. Uh, admission test preparation, university interview preparation. These are academic elements. Now, super curricula. What are super curricula? Joining clubs, societies, wider reading, depth and breadth, membership with academic bodies and institutions, subscription, subscribe to The Economist, subscribe to Royal Society of Chemistry, subscribe to... Uh, lots of different institutions based on what your choices are. So if you have an interest in economic, subscribe to Institute of Economic Affairs, okay? If you have an interest in psychology, subscribe to the British Psychological Society, become a member of the society, or at least get access to the materials, to the articles, right? So that's what it means by membership with academic bodies and institutions. Attending guest lectures and academic conferences, right? Very important, if you have opportunities to attend guest lectures, um, academic conferences, please do so. Even if it's online, go for those webinars. Very, very important when you have webinars on particular topics. So for example, Coursera, Coursera is free, right? You have courses on cryptocurrency, you have courses on molecules, medicines, and drugs, right? If you have an interest in that. You have courses on law, right? Go on to those webinars, guest lectures, online courses. It's called MOOCs, go on the online courses like Coursera or Future, uh, Future Learn, right? So look at these online courses. Work placements, work experience, very important. Now you guys, because of your age, you're able to do more work experience. You can't at the moment because of your age, but by the time you get to year 11, you should be able to do some work experience. But start planning for work experience now because it's very hard to get work placements, right? So start applying for work experience. Do your CV, write your cover letter, apply for work experience. Talk to your parents. Maybe your parents can help you to get work placements. But the more you apply yourself, the better because you can show that journey to the university, not just because your parents have got it for you. So apply for work experience, okay? And get work experience. Volunteering, volunteering work is very important because each one of you, I'm sure, want to contribute to the community, right? I'm sure you all wanna make changes in the world and you wanna show contribution to the community. That is why you study. You study because you wanna change the world, right? You wanna make a difference. So volunteering is quite a key thing. So if you're already doing volunteering work, great. If you're not, start doing volunteering work. Remember that consistency is important. Do it on a regular basis, okay? Personal development, right? Taking part in university style learning competitions. Taking part in competitions, Olympiads, maths Olympiads, physics Olympiads, chemistry Olympiad, biology Olympiad, maths challenges. Uh, you can take part in robotic competitions, essay competitions, so many essay competitions you can take part in, okay? Yeah? So that's what supercurricular means, okay? Differentiation is key. Follow your passions, be proactive, and your personal portfolio will mold itself. Differentiation is key. Differentiation means you are different from that person to that person to that person to that person. Because not each one of you here will never have the same supercurricular portfolio. You may have the same grades, 
but you will never ever have the same supercurricular portfolio, never. It's impossible, statistically, <laughs> right, okay? Unless, of course, you are twins and then you do everything together, then that's different, okay? But you're not likely to have the same things, okay? So differentiation is key. Right, so there are six strands. There are six strands of supercurricula. Strand number one, beyond the syllabus. So what does that mean? So these are things that you can do outside of your syllabus. So for example, taking independent research report like EPQ, extended project qualification, that is beyond the syllabus. So you're doing things which has qualifications beyond your syllabus. So for example, EPQ is an example beyond the syllabus, okay? Then programs, awards, competitions. Please check up different programs, different competitions. Your school, when they have competitions, take part in the competitions. Take part in outside competitions. Competitions are great. Make sure you take part in that. Win or lose doesn't matter. The fight is what counts, okay? Win or lose really doesn't matter. Take part in competitions, as many as you can even if it's not related to your course. I had a student who applied for dentistry um, and he took part in the humanities essay competition and he got first. Brilliant. So much to talk about in his interview or in his, in his reference or personal statement, right? So take part in as many competitions, even if it's not related to your course. Clubs and societies. There are three types of clubs and societies. Fun clubs, academic clubs, skills clubs. Fun club is things like music, sports, arts, right? Glee club, for example, is a fun club. So please take part in that because you need to have fun in your life, right? Number one. Number two, academic clubs, chemistry club, economics club, maths club, medical society, take part in those clubs. Number three, skills club, debating is a skill club, right? Photography is a skill club, take part in those. Try to do as much things related to your career, to your course. Try, because again, you have to think about time constraints. You guys have three years, you could do as many clubs and societies as you want to, right? You can take part in photography, first term. Second term, you can take part in something more specific to your career. So you have time. You don't have time, be specific. Choose the right clubs for your careers, okay? You have time, but remember three years. Three years can go very quickly, right? So be careful what were you plan, year one, year two, year three. Yes, okay? Right, so that is strand two. Strand three, club society. If there is a club and society that you would like to organize because your school doesn't have it, then organize it. Even if it means you do a podcast, right? You can create your own club, even if your school doesn't have it. Like if your school doesn't have an engineering society, if you want to do a rocketry competition, rocketry, for example, then set it up yourself. Do it between your teams. Take part in competition. Be proactive. That is what they're looking for. Okay, so don't be, um, don't be confined to the constraints of your environment. Broader that, okay, broaden that, right? Um, strand four, further personal development. So what does that mean? That means taking part in, for example, philosophy classes, computational thinking classes, anything that can really develop your thinking skills right? Whether it's philosophy. Philosophy is a great subject to do. Don't do it as A-levels, because it's quite tough as A-levels, but do it as enrichment, okay? Uh, philosophy, computational thinking, lambda, lambda, which is a uh, uh, music and arts and drama public speaking qualification, young enterprise, you know, that is also something which is beyond the syllabus. Beyond the syllabus and further personal development pretty much links together because you're doing things outside the enrichment, outside things that can help you with thinking skills, things that can help you to expand your syllabus, okay? Now, the last two, strand five and strand six, this is where you need help coaching so that you can get the right strategy to get into those top universities. So that's like the last part of your whole cycle, okay? That's strategy. So strand one to four, is discovering your passion and building evidence for your passion. Strand five and strand six is strategy, strategy, strategy. Okay?
that's where you need some help and coaching from the right experts to help you with universities. Uh, how do you present your case? But this is the building blocks. This is what you're going to do. These strand one to four building blocks, strand five to six strategy. Okay? Got it? Good. Right. Examples of main features, strand one. Okay. So what is example of strand one? Right. Extend your knowledge. Develop essay writing skills. Write comparative writing task, analytical writing task. Very important, essay writing skills. Expose you to wider research and university style. I kid you not, if you want to survive university, you need to know how to write. Writing is so important. So learn, that's why I want you to blog. I want you to blog. Every time you read something, you blog, okay? One of the things that we're going to be doing with Krupong, uh, with Crew to Home School, is we're going to be offering students the opportunity to blog, and then they will get feedback over their blog so that you can improve your blog each time. That will improve your write reading and improve your writing, because writing is so important. So that is something that we will be doing with Crew to Home School. Um, examples of uh, beyond syllabus, EPQ, analytical writing task, online access to journal articles, but don't just read, write, okay? Current affairs, trends, research classes, again, don't just read, write, okay? Educational trips and conferences, don't just go to the trips, write, okay? Monthly guest lectures, don't just attend the guest lectures, write about it. Uh, public lectures at the University of Oxford, as an example, if you can attend those public lectures. Oxford Union debating also, if you can attend that. Subject-specific career workshops, CV, cover letter, work placements, volunteering work. These are all the things beyond the syllabus. Okay? But don't just attend or read. You must write. After every experience, write. And that is what I'm saying. We're going to be starting a project with Crew to Home School where we will have mentors who will provide feedback over everything that you write about, okay? Which will help you with your reading and your writing. Right, programs, awards, and competitions. So it enhances your subject knowledge, builds the ability to work in a team, it shows leadership skills, it en enables you to showcase your ability, and if you win something, it's great, right? So examples of your programs, awards, and competitions, it could be things like academic competitions, Olympiads, business achievements, Duke Edinburgh Award, Young Enterprise Program, Young Investor Challenge, Lambda, Lambda is public speaking, Keen Young Leaders Program, Wings of Hope Award, this is voluntary work, Future Leaders uh, Program, house competitions in your school, for example, these are programs, awards, and competitions. And there are so many competitions. There's one called Global Space Design Competition, a brilliant competition to take part in. My suggestion is by Imperial. Please write it down, Global Space Design Competition. If you want to have access to that competition, let me know. I can connect you with Imperial. And Crew to Home School can also help you with it as well. Brilliant competition to take part. OK? I really recommend you to do that. Right, clubs and societies, as I told you, You've got, um, you have three types of clubs and societies. You have the fun, the skill, the academic. So for example, you can take part in computational thinking, uh, philosophy workshops, debating society, medic society, law society, history of art, documentary society, economics, creativity, mindfulness, art club. So clubs and societies is a great way to show you're being part of a group, you're engaged in relevant tasks, you share information, you demonstrate to universities that you have been active in wanting to learn more by participating with others. That is key as well, that you can work in a team, you can work with people, because that's how you're going to have to work at a university, right? So again, being part of the member of these clubs, very, very important. As I said to you, if there is one club that I would recommend that all of you take part is debating. Because debating teaches you to how to think on your feet. That is crucial. Because remember, at interview, they can ask you anything under the sun. There's no, like, textbook. They can ask anything they want to, right? There's always a framework. Of course there's a framework, right? But they can still ask you anything under the sun, okay? Right, considering uh, strand, uh, what did we do? Strand four, uh, did we do strand three? Strand four. Strand four. 
uh, in further personal development. So things like growth mindset, active recall learning. Remember, I really hope all of you here have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset means I can't do it. Growth mindset means I'm yet to do it. The word yet is what means growth mindset. So sometimes maybe it takes you a year longer. Maybe it takes you more time than other students. So what? The most important thing is what outcomes you want to achieve, right? It's not that you have not there yet. If you really am, am, uh, uh, you are, have an ambition, you, you have to fight for it. A dream is not something that you dream at night. A dream is something that doesn't let you sleep. Okay, right? So you have to have that ambition and then you work for it. So it doesn't matter. So growth mindset, I really hope that each one of you, if you ever have been in a fixed mindset, change it from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. That means I don't, I can't do it right now. I'm yet to do it. Yet, the word yet. Please put that in your vocabulary. Yet. Okay? If you have that, that's a further personal development. Mindfulness training. Networking masterclasses. Networking is great. Network with people, mentors from different universities, right? Business negotiation workshop, brilliant to use at interview. How do you negotiate complex negotiation? Self-development, house competitions, reading challenge. Look at reading challenges as well. That's very important. Then you have considering university options. Strand five, as I said to you, strand five and strand six is really about university preparation. Right. So if you need any help with this aspect uh, at OIC, we have mentors, we have uh, external um, tutors that we can help you. So basically at OIC, Oxford International College, of course, we have students that come to us to study A-levels, but we also help students, external students like you. So if you're not part of OIC, we can still help you with your whole super curricula, with your personal statement, with your admission test, with your interview preparation. We can also help you with the blog writing, giving you feedback over every blog that you write, okay? So if you need any support in those areas, we can help you with those, right? So we, we also help external students, not just students at OIC, we help external students as well. Right, okay, so yes, so that's what I was saying about how, so this is just to show you the pathway to your dream university and career, year seven onwards. You wanna take a picture of that? So it shows you what you need to do from year seven up to year 13. This is important, especially for you guys, the group there. Okay. All right. So very important. Take a list of this as well. It tells you the breakdown of the career, some of the courses for each career group. And I want you to explore, this is mainly for you guys. Make sure that you explore the different areas of each career groups. For you guys, either you have eliminated at least two and you can focus on one. If you haven't, it's time for you to do so, okay? Admission test, very important. We'll talk about admission tests in a minute. If you need help with admission tests, again, we can help you with the preparation for university interview, super curricular coaching. Um, again, um, Year 12 is about consolidating your preparation. Do go and attend university open days. You have to start shortlisting universities by the time you're in year 12 and practice admission test. And then, of course, in year 13, um, you need to strategize your application, finalize your university choices, personal statement, interview coaching. If you, need my, if you need to contact me for anything, this is my email address. Please take this as well. And I want to now show you admission test, okay? Oh, this is, this is the one I was telling you about, the Global Space Design Challenge. This is a great competition to take part in, okay? So I would recommend. If you want to email me, I can contact, I can connect you with Imperial. Imperial organizes this. So I'm very happy to connect you with them. This is, this is not just for students who want to do physics or engineering. This is actually for all courses because you have to design a, um, you have to design a civilization. In, in Mars or you know outside space basically outside Earth to so design civilization so that covers everything law psychology medicine economics everything okay right um, so Oxford Science Studies just want to share with you 
this is our um, division in our college, which offers academic help, academic support. And this is our division that uh, supports with university preparation. So we have two division. So this is the academic division, academic support, like your curriculum, GCSE, A-levels, IB. And this one supports with um, university admissions, university admission tests, personal statements, super curricular coaching, and so on. Okay, um, I am now going to ask you, I want to show you admission test. So I want to show you, I want to give you and some awareness of admission test. Right, can I ask you to take this QR code? Done? This one has questions. Sorry, can you, excuse me, can you just call Mason? Mason, is she there? Hi Mason, we are doing an admission test now. This one, this is okay, this QR? Okay, right, so don't start yet, guys, don't start yet. One second. One second, guys. Okay, this, I'll, I'll give it to you in a minute. Don't start yet, one second. Right, this is a list of admission tests, okay? The list is not exhaustive, okay? There are many admission tests. Like for medicine, you have BMAT, UCAT, for law, you have LNAT, TSA, NSAA, ENGA for engineering, ECA for economics. This is no longer a test, by the way. It's LNAT now for Cambridge, so this is no longer. Um, but these are admission tests, okay? As I told you before, remember, what are the three things besides academic universities look at? What are the three things? Number one, admission test. Number two, interview. Number three, number three, start with P personal statement, right? And then, of course, your academic results. So we have covered personal statement, we have covered interviews, and now we're going to do admission test. Okay, cool? Right. This admission test is just for awareness only, just for you to practice, just to show you the type of admission test questions. And normally what happens is, as you can see, this is like a bar chart outcome of this admission test. People who get offered, shortlisted but no offer applied as you can see the percentages of students who apply you have to be if you want to get the offer you have to get above 70 percent and above some students still get rejected even after 70 percent and above and that's because they didn't do well in the interview does that make sense now some students get accepted even at lower results but that is for home students not for international students so you need to get above 70% and above. This is just an example of results for one of the admission tests. Not all admission tests, for one of them. It's called the MAT. Okay? Shall we try some admission test questions? The great thing about this is that you don't have to practice, you don't have to have knowledge of this. This is more about skills. Yes? Oh, the QR code again. Yes, yes. There you go. But don't start doing the questions yet. Yeah, yeah, don't don't start the questions, please. Just wait. Just wait. There's something wrong? Yeah, yeah. Don't start yet, guys. Okay, done? Everybody got it? Okay, right, don't start yet until I say. Okay, thank you. Right, I'm going to go to the...
first question and then do a per question. Okay, cool. Right, we're going to try the first question. You have 60 seconds per question. So I'm going to put the timer. Okay, right. So if you look at a clock and the time is 9.45, what is the angle between the hour and the minute hands? Okay, how many of you say A? Put your hands up. Hands up if you say A. You cannot abstain, okay? You have to give an answer. One, two, three. B. B. C. D. E. Okay, some people abstain. You cannot abstain. You have to answer. Right, I'm going to start again. A, B, C, D, E. Ah, some people still abstain. Okay, that's fine. Right, the answer is D. Okay, so when the minute hand is pointed at the nine, indicating 45 minutes plus the hour, the hour hand will have moved three quarters of the angle between the nine and the 10 on the clock dial. The angle between the nine and the 10 is 30 degrees, so the hour hand will have moved three quarters of 30 degrees or 22.5 degrees. Now, we don't have time for me to go into the depths of this. The exercise today is just to give you awareness of admission test questions, okay? So you can see that it's nothing to do with your syllabus. This is to do with practice, knowledge, skills, okay? Combine those two together. Again, you guys have three years, you guys have a year. Remember that, okay? Now, at OIC, we practice this in classes. We actually have classes to practice on admission test. But this is something you can get coaching, you can get training for, okay? Right, next question, ready? Uh, again, uh, 60 seconds. Now, remember, the thing about this is accuracy and speed. So you have to get the right answer within the time. Normally, you have like around 60 seconds, um, sometimes more than one minute, but generally speaking is 60 seconds. My timer doesn't work. Can you have a... Now? Right. Two neighbors work for the same company and share the journey to work, driving alternately in strict rotation. They work Monday to Friday each week and every other Saturday. They always work the same Saturdays as each other. What is the maximum number of days either of them has to drive in a calendar month? Okay, good. Okay, how many people said A? B? C, D, and E. Okay? The answer is, ready? C. 
So maximum number of days in a calendar month is 31. Each day of the week occurs four times during the first 28 days of every month. Two of these days will be working Saturdays. So it's 29, 30, and 31st of a 31 day month are all weekdays or if the 31st is a working Saturday the number of working days during the month will be that in a month when the neighbors work the maximum 25 days one of them will drive 12 times and the other one will drive 13 times okay yes right next one is I think my question ready yes this is the one I wrote my favorite question. Let's give this one uh, 120. Okay, how many of you said A, B, C, D, and E? Okay, this is my question. My students have never forgiven me for writing this question. But the answer is E. So because Alistair changes the code each time, you must not allow yourself to be distracted by the symbols of making up his name. You simply need to identify which one of the option has repeated letters in the positions of the repeated symbols in the reply. Only sometime has the seventh letter the same as the third letter and the eighth letter the same as the fourth letter. So it's sometime. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Which one do you want? Would you like to have the good news or the bad news first? Bad news. Bad news. This is level one. These questions that I'm showing you are level one. You like video games? Level one, level, yeah. You have to go through like so many challenges to go to the next level. All right, this is level one questions. The good news, you wanna know the good news? This, almost everybody who start doing these practices, they start off in the same position as you are, but yet they go on to achieve fantastic results and get to top university. Right, so you're not, you're not the first and you're gonna be the last, okay? You definitely can work towards improving this, okay? Right, next question, ready? 120 for this, yeah. This is maths here, this should be straightforward.
Okay. Who said A? B. C. D. And E. Okay, some people choose to abstain. <laughs> okay, the answer is C. So starting point in the search for the answer to this question is to appreciate that Janet has been given a multiple of 12p by her mother, and she has used the whole of this to buy at least eight oranges at 10p. The smallest multiple of 12p greater than 80p that is also a multiple of 10p is 120p. So with 120p, she would have bought 10 oranges at 12p, but she can buy 12 at 10p. Like I said, it's very maths-y here, okay? Right, ready, next one? This is 120 as well. This is a very wordy question. Okay, so Gumby and Sons have decided it is time to modernize their image. To go with their new steel and glass office building, they decided to change the company name. A number of acronyms have been shortlisted, and to help choose between them, the company chairman suggests they could choose a name which, when painted vertically from top to bottom on the new glass front door, will read the same from inside and out. So for these type of questions, you need to have an understanding of the language, okay? So you, otherwise, you can't answer these questions. You need to know what it means by acronyms. You need to know what it means by the vertical, horizontal. You have to imagine what is happening here. We have to imagine that understanding the language. So it's very important that you have, in order for, to get the admission test, your language has to be on a very good level. So which of the following names should they choose? Who said A? A, okay. B, Nona. C, Dude. D, Mita. And E, Weem. Okay. The answer is... Well done for those of you who said D. The important feature of this question is that the name is to be painted vertically on the new glass front door. So that means the individual letters can be considered separately and each one must have a vertical line of symmetry in order to appear the same inside and out. Of the name suggested, only the letters Mita have a vertical line of symmetry. Okay, so that is key. Right, next one. This is easy. The rule of which set does the test shape follow? 60 seconds, please. Yeah. Set A, set B, neither. So you look at the test shape. Which set does the test shape follow? Set A, set B, neither. So you look at the test shape in the box here and look at the set A and set B. Which one does the test shape follow?
Okay, who said A, B, and C? Okay, the answer is C. Set A, the lower images are mirror-like reflection of the upper images. Set B, the images on the right are mirror-like reflection of the images on the left. So the test shape fits neither rule. Now, this is actually a question that is asked a lot uh, in most of the admission test, as in the type of question, pattern, visual. Right, okay. So, um, we've done, so basically admission test guys have three types of questions. Multiple choice questions, essay-based questions, open-ended questions. So these are essay-based questions. Rosalind Franklin said that science gives only a partial explanation of life. Explain what you understand is meant by her statement. Argue to the contrary that science can give a complete explanation of life. To what extent do you agree with Franklin's statement? When I asked somebody in another session, I said, who is Rosalind Franklin? They said, is Benjamin Franklin's wife. <laughs> you know who Benjamin Franklin is? Right, the U.S. Uh, President <laughs> Rosalind Franklin is Benjamin Franklin's wife. Great. Um, Alnet. Alnet is for law. We must be prepared to sacrifice traditional liberties to defeat terrorism. Discuss what is political correctness and why does it matter? TSA Oxford. Um, also, you can have PAT, physics. Okay, physics, open-ended questions. Open-ended questions can be something like this. Toilet roll is made up of an inner cardboard tube, diameter X centimeter, with toilet paper wrapped around to give an overall diameter of Y centimeter. The length of the cardboard tube is Z centimeter. Suppose the diameter of the inner tube is reduced from X centimeter, but the volume of toilet paper is kept the same. What is the difference in the total volume of the roll? So that's an open-ended question. Or you can be given an article. You're given an article. So then you read the article and you answer questions based on the article. Okay, but these are the three types of, ooh, so these are, what is happening here? Hello. These are the three types of um, admission test questions. Right, so just, just going back here. So there are three types of, um, um, there's the multiple choice questions. Uh, there are multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, essay-based questions, okay? Now, the key thing to take away from today is not that you have to be an expert in admission tests. You don't have to be an expert right now. You do need to do two things. Number one, have an awareness of the type of admission test, which we've already done, okay? Number two, you need to now practice. Practice, practice, practice every day. But you only have to practice the admission test that is related to your course. So you guys need to determine what that is. You don't have to determine right now. However, for you guys, because you have three years before you apply to university, you should be practicing on three different skills. Abstract reasoning, verbal reasoning, Problem solving. And very excellent. And very excellent. So learn these four skills. Okay, learn these four skills as you carry on the next three years. So look at reasoning books. Find reasoning books and practice reasoning questions. Problem solving questions. Okay, you guys need to figure out what exactly the course you're going to be applying for, and then you practice. So, for example, if you're going to do law, you practice LMAT. If you want to do engineering, you'll practice anger. If you're doing psychology, psychology at top universities, there's no admission test. They are written assessment. So you have to practice essay writing. Okay. Uh, if you want to do medicine, you have to practice BMAT and UCAT on a daily basis. I'm talking daily basis, not just kind of just before you take the exam. Okay. For you guys, re uh, learn the four skills. Okay. Adva um, you do problem solving, uh, abstract reasoning, verbal reasoning, essay writing. So then the next three years. And then by the time you get to year 12, like these students here on this side, you will then start to focus on one admission test, on the admission test that you'll be taking for university application. Okay? Right. Now, any questions? Any questions? 
or have I overloaded you with so much information? Overload information. You need to go and cool down your brain now, <laughs> right? Overload, <laughs> right? Look, bottom line is today's session is to, just to give you an awareness, just to give you an insight and oversight of what you need to be doing over the next few years. Um, in preparation for this journey of applying to top universities. Most important thing that I hope you get out of this session is please do try. Don't give up. Please do at least make an attempt to apply to these top universities. What is the alternative? You can get to any university, trust me. Getting to university is not as competitive as it used to be before. It's no longer something to die for because education is, you know, is open, is there. You can get it easily right? Especially if you have the resources, if you have the means to get it. For you guys, you have the means, you have the resources to get it, right? But the key thing is, do you want to go to the right university, the right platform, the right education that fits for you? That is going to be the key. That's the challenge. So please do try. Um, this process is actually, is, is difficult. I'm not saying it's easy. You have to work very hard. But what you will gain out of this process is so many skills that will last for a lifetime. The fact that you're taking part in pr uh, projects, in competitions, you're taking, you're going for work experience, you're building network, right, is amazing. My One of my law students, who is now at Cambridge University, she went for work experience during her year 12. They were so impressed by her, they asked her to come back again in year 13. And when she went to university, they asked her to come back again for, for her placement. You build network. This is amazing. This is above and beyond textbook, right? You really, this is so exciting. Supercurricular is surely is an exciting part of your journey because you are discovering your passion. You are becoming academic. You are building your academic curiosity. You are building your skills, whether it's writing skills or speaking or communication. And you are doing, you are also building your networking ability, right? All these things are going to last you for a lifetime. So please do attempt, um, make a good case of your application, have the strength, have the courage to go through this process. And remember, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. Even if you don't get number one, if you get number two and number three, it's equally very good. But if you aim for number five, you're going to get number 10, right? So that's the whole thing about aiming high and getting to top universities, okay? Right, I'm going to give you my business cards. Uh, if you have any questions that you want to, you know, if you want to have reading list, if you want to have a book, uh, uh, like a reading list for your different careers, I'm very happy to send that to you. Um, if you want to have information about work experience, I'm very happy to send that to you. If you have, if you want to try more admission test questions, I have a lot of logical thinking questions. Actually, I, I'll leave you with this question. Try this for homework. Um, try this question. It's logical thinking question. See if you can do this. There you go. Do you want to take a copy? It's a very interesting question. Very, very interesting question. Have you taken the copy of this? Yes, taken a picture of this, try this. Also, um, which one? The hat, this one, try this one as well. It's a good one. Try this and one more, last one. So I've given you three questions, thinking skills questions. Try them, they're absolutely brilliant questions, okay? Try them, right? And, and if you want to send me the, uh, the, um, your results, your answers, I'm very happy to have a look at that. I will give you my card. Do you have, it's in my bag, where's my, oh, it's here. Yeah. I'll give you my card, but all, all it remains for me to say is all the best 
I wish you all the best in this journey. Uh, if I don't see you again, then I really hope that today's session has spurred that awareness or that uh, at least got you on to think about what you need to be doing next. Uh, I've given you my card, so if you want to be in touch and you want to get any help in any, any aspect of your university journey or application, very happy to help you. But in general, I wish you all the best. Yes, and I wish all your dreams come true. And I really hope that the session today has helped you to gain that awareness. Okay? Any questions? Anybody would like to ask anything? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.